Hi, this PhotoPie tutorial compares digital backgrounds and real backgrounds, the pros and cons of each, and the difficulties and advantages of each, as well as the procedures for setting up a green screenshot versus setting up and editing a real backdrop shot. Now, most of this video content evolved out of a dialogue I was having with one of our YouTube channel subscribers. He actually has his own channel as well as his own photography business, Photography by Jeff, if you'd like to check that out. Anyway, he and I were comparing two photography styles and discussing how to set up these types of shots. He started by showing me a retouching challenge that he was having on one of his own images. And the one that, and one image that is very representative of challenges that we all face uh, if we're compiling these types of green screen or digital backdrop images. So he first started with this picture of a model on a gray backdrop. And he asked how I would Photoshop it, so I started by matching it with a digital backdrop of a similar color scheme. And first I just used the uh, magic wand tool or the quick selection tool to grab a selection of the model and then I cut and paste it and put it on this greenish gray backdrop and the reason I chose it is because it is it is of similar color and you can tell around the feet it's a very smooth match it looks like she could be standing on this greenish gray beach uh, but uh, the problem that you're always going to have and the one of the most notorious problems if the hair is not smooth if it's flowing at all or swishing then we're going to have this this problem in the details of the hair and you can also see around the edge of the skirt there's as it starts to get the color starts to get lighter there is a remnant of that darker color of the gray background but if you're going to use the uh, eraser tool and erase all of the little minute details around the hair and use a selection tool and really make it look perfect it's going to take a long time and you can see where the magic wand tool is selected around the hair up here on top and it just doesn't look natural at all. Hair is such a fine thing that it's really hard to match with the digital backdrop. So what you want to do in the beginning is is uh, photograph your subject on a on a backdrop that is similar to what type of digital backdrop you're going to bring in. Um, now one problem with this so as you can see because it's similar the feet and the lower torso everything from the lower torso down looks like a good match but it's not a good environment match the way she's dressed her her posing her smile all looks very upbeat and very joyful and uh, almost a silly type of uh, environment sh would be appropriate to match it so I next took her and put her on this flower field now this is a more appropriate environment match but you can see that it's not as appropriate of a color match around her feet and around the edge of her skirt you see this dark line this dark remnant that's really hard to get rid of now, of course, you could have gotten rid of that if you had photographed her on a, on a green backdrop. Uh, but every time there's a different color, you're going to have a problem bringing in, uh, bringing in that remnant around the, the tracing edge of the subject. And again, the hair is going to be a really uh, horrible problem. So if you really wanted to complete this uh, shot like it should be done and provide a seamless uh, reality transition with a digital backdrop, you would want to shoot this girl on a backdrop that looks something like this. Now I suppose you could paint a muslin backdrop where it has multi-tonal layers and then you could bring in the digital backdrop. You'd have to pay for the fabric, you'd have to or compile some kind of digital image on your computer and project it on the wall. There's a lot of different routes but it would be a lot of trouble and the retouch is going to be really sophisticated. So I propose instead of uh, producing some type of backdrop like this and placing your subject over it and then having a more seamless uh, digital backdrop transition, I propose using uh, using real backdrops like the type we sell at PhotoPie. And when you do that, you, you can produce images that look something like this. This is our subway backdrop image, and you can tell we have some hair swishing and blowing in the wind, but at the same time, we have no remnants of any other colors or any, any remnants of any other types of uh, layers or, or different types of transition that are coming in on top of this. So from the top of her head to to about her belly button, we would have about 25, maybe 20, 25 different types of colors. We have light green, dark blue, yellow, purple, uh, several different shades that would just be impossible with all the intricacies and the, the fine aspect of her hair. You can even have even more swishing hair like we see here but yet it's still no problem and at the same time a digital backdrop provides a sense of 3D she's actually standing on the backdrop so it it provides a seamless seamless connection between the floor and the background you're seeing behind her 
and you can also see on the floor there's shadows which also makes it look very natural and we're blowing her hair so it actually looks like the subway which is going by is what's interacting with her so she's a part of the environment around her if you if you engineer the shot right if you add some extra elements or some props or even some wind so in my opinion these are some of the reasons why I would prefer to use a digital uh, excuse me a <laughs> a real backdrop over a digital backdrop there's some other fun things that you can do as well that I would like to point out one thing we did is we wanted to make her levitating in the subway now we put her laying on stools and we took a picture of her on the stools and a picture of her not in the in the in front of the background at all we took the stools away and the subject away and just took a plain picture uh, of the backdrop while the camera was still on a mount so so that the position was exactly the same now all we gotta do is take a selection of the subject obviously you'd want to be a little more careful and have a really precise selection of the subject and maybe do a two pixel feather that's what I usually work with but then after you bring one layer and put it on top of another you can erase out the stools to produce produce a really seamless seamless cool looking image of a girl lav levitating in a subway and I think this would be much more intensive and you have hanging hair much more labor intensive if you were doing this with digital backdrops or with green screens so for these reasons I, I'll admit my bias I am a, I have a preference for uh, for real backdrops as opposed to digital backdrops for one the reason of uh, labor uh, labor saving time saving uh, methods and also just for a, a smooth transition between the subject uh, subject and the background well thank you for watching this photopie tutorial and stay tuned for more to come